How do you confront a toxic leader in a toxic church or organization? I wrote a blog post a few years back to answer this question, and it is now the most read post on my website, readingremy.com. In fact, the popularity of this post is the reason that I wrote the book, Broken Trust, a practical guide to identify and recover from toxic faith, toxic church, and spiritual abuse. In this three-part video series here, I want to give you some brief tips if you find yourself in a toxic and or abusive church setting. You know, I'm sad to say that there are many toxic leaders and pastors and toxic churches and organizations in the world today. Thousands of people are being hurt by them. It's so contrary to what people and organizations are called by God to do. So, is there something we can do about this? Do we have any responsibility to confront the problem that we see? Let me start by defining what it means to be a toxic leader with the help of Tom Rayner. He has quantified 14 symptoms of a toxic leader, and I want to highlight nine of these symptoms for you and see if you can identify any of these in the, in the leader or leadership of your organization. So, number one, the leader manipulates people to promote their personal agenda. Number two, the leader dodges, deflects, or rejects criticism. Three, the leader consistently rationalizes and minimizes their negative behavior. Number four, the leader intimidates people with their biblical and persuasive arguments. Five, the leader twists scripture to support his or her claims. Number six, the leader turns criticism back on the person who confronts them, shutting down their concerns. Number seven, the leader shields himself or herself from critics and marginalizes them. Number eight, the leader insists on their agenda despite the concerns of others. And number nine, the leader justifies their agenda by saying that God told them. It always amazes me how a toxic leader with these traits can get into power and stay there. I mean, how does that happen? I think it happens because the leader is often one of the few people in leadership who is educated in the Bible and ministry. Most everyone around the leader is a volunteer and no one feels confident to challenge the leader's decisions. When one person is silent, that causes the next person to doubt what they see and then they also stand silent. Before you know it, there is an unintentional conspiracy of silence. And this can last for years, allowing all kinds of toxicity and abuse to develop and for people to be hurt. When this happens, the leader's inner circle is silenced, which eliminates any kind of accountability for the leader. And those on the outer circle, they don't feel like they are close enough to the leader to say anything. They notice questionable behavior, but don't have enough evidence or proximity to the leader to feel confident to say anything. And if the inner circle is silent, they think, well, who am I to say anything? And so it goes. As time goes by, habits are cemented into place. The leader is effectively insulated from any correction. He or she is free to per perpetuate their toxic behavior because the insiders have gone quiet and the outsiders have no access. The majority of the church or organization has no idea what's going on because they rarely see the leader like a pastor on Sunday. If someone does suggest a problem, they are quickly rebuked as being critical or rebellious. People will point to all the good things happening in the organization to prove that God's blessing is there, so the leadership must be fine. Does that sound familiar? Well, this is the end of part one. Part two of this video series will start to give you specific steps to confront a toxic pastor. Please consider sharing this video with others. Thanks.